Hello guys, welcome to another episode and we're gonna talk the Chauvin trial today. So, oh, the Chauvin trial. All right, so this is a very, anytime somebody kills someone else, whether it's accidental, on purpose, whatever you want to call it, it's not a good thing, okay? Um, even if I have to kill somebody in defense of myself or my family, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to feel too bad about it, but it's still not a good thing. Somebody made a bad choice and decided that their life wasn't worth it. And they put their life on the line by going after other people. Um, somebody like me would have to then defend myself. So I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm terribly happy about any of this at all. To me, it's just all tragic. So, <clears throat> but I don't think that Chauvin got a fair trial. I don't think his trial was anything but a fair trial. I think he was basically sacrificed to the mob. And I think that's very sad. I wish people would understand or I wish people would realize or whatever word you want to use that when you go out here in this world and you consistently make the choice to do the wrong thing then that is how people view you especially the cops the cops only have the facts of what you've done or are doing if you've watched any video and I've watched a lot of video about this case and how it went down when he was pulled over, people were coming up to the cops being like, he's crazy, he's on something. He's crazy, he's on something. And these were people who knew him. They knew that he was always on something. So these cops are already like in defense mode because they have to be in defense mode or they're going to die because somebody's on something, they're not acting right. Then on top of that, he's saying he's acting all weird. He's, it's, it's not like a violent pushback of these cops, but he is going against them. He is telling them no, 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 and just doing everything he can without actually punching somebody to get away from them. I haven't had much interaction with cops. Most of my interactions with cops have not been good. <laughs> um, but all, everything I know is if they put you in handcuffs, you shut up. You sit in the car and you go with them. When you get to wherever it is they're taking you, whichever precinct, whatever, then the only thing that you say is, I want a lawyer. You let them fingerprint you, you let them take your picture, you let them do whatever it is they're gonna do. And that is what I was taught. I was taught that you need to be as submissive as possible without letting them like assault you or something, which these cops were not doing. We have all the video evidence in the world showing that they weren't doing that. Okay. You need to be as submissive as possible. They say, get on the ground with your face on the ground, put your hands up behind your head or whatever it is. That's what you do because these guys are already in a stressful situation. People in stressful situations from my, from on my side and on their side. Okay. They need to see that you are not a threat and that's what you're doing. You are with every single way that you're doing things indicating that you are not a threat. Now you don't have to, you can be submissive. You can be all those things and still protect your rights by saying no, sir, or no ma'am, or Hey, thank you for telling me what I've done. But you know, the law says I don't have to do this. So thank you. And I'm just not going to. And if they want to know why and all that, say, you know, well, I just don't have to, so I'm not going to, I'm not comfortable. You know, you need to be at the height of your politeness when this happens because they have body cameras, because, you know, you need to have your own camera. You need to do this. All right. I wanted to say all of that just because this situation, these situations, any situation with a police officer is always tricky. You don't ever know if you have a good one or a bad one. That's what I always say. I said, I don't know if that's a good cop or a bad cop. They don't know if I'm a, you know, behaving citizen or not. And since we don't know, we each have to be this, you know, 
very polite, very like, I'm not here to hurt you kind of person. And he was not doing that. Okay. Here's a number one reason why I think that this trial was not about the facts. As you can see right here. Christensen was someone who did not actually decide anything, but she sat in there with everyone. And she's saying that there's an atmosphere of real fear in the jury. I did not want to go through rioting and destruction again. I was concerned about people coming to my house. They're not happy with the verdict. Excuse me. So if you think she did not voice that while she's in there, I don't think that you're thinking very clearly. <laughs> she, of course, would have said something along those lines. She would have, as they were discussing it, say, well, what is the consequences of a not guilty verdict? All right. And they made their decision based on that is what I think. Now, she said that she didn't think Chauvin was, was not guilty. She still thought he was guilty. But that thought right there, to me, is what makes my argument for me. Here's another thing, and to be honest, like to be completely, like I live in reality, I understand this. Defense and prosecuting attorneys, no matter which one they are, always want you to use your emotion because your emotion is going to give them whatever verdict that they want, right? But, oh, hold on, let's see if I can find it. Well, I was just reading it. Where'd it go? Oh, the page reset. Oh, jeez. Okay. Yourcentralvalley.com. I'm going to put that in the, in the notes down in my comment that I usually leave. Is saying <clears throat> that when the jury was given their instruction before they left, he was saying that you don't have to look at the facts you should even have to you just have to know what's in your heart well when you go to trial you're not supposed to use your emotions you're supposed to use the facts i have another video where apparently they were saying that they couldn't even prove that his knee was on this guy's neck i don't know how true that is because if you watch the video his knee is on his neck <clears throat> Let's see if I can find it. Looks like I went too far. I've also heard, but I cannot find it anymore, that when the coroner got his body, the coroner automatically said that he died of heart failure instead of um, being choked to death and that he was made to change that. Now, like I said, I can't find anything that supports what I'm saying here, so take that or leave that as you will. No, I can't find it, but it's in here. Where he's saying, you know, you just, your heart will tell you, you don't have to just watch the video and your emotions will tell you exactly what has happened here. And basically this guy got convicted on emotions and he got convicted on fear of the children who burn things down. That's something else I just want to, I have to say it because this is exactly what two and three year olds do. They pitch a fit and then they wait and see who gives into them and whoever gives into them, that becomes like their favorite person because they can get away with stuff. Okay. So <clears throat> this is exactly what BLM and all of them are doing. You give us what we want or we're going to burn everything down, you know, including our stuff. So for me, it is very, it is, even like 10 times more important that we don't listen to people like that because they are saying if you don't give us what we think is right if besides the facts because let's just be honest here blm and all these other um 
communist factors don't care about the facts. They just want what they want, whatever it is they want in that emotional moment. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that being the case, we can't listen to them. We can't give them anything that tells them that no power at all, as far as I'm concerned. Burning down anything does not solve anything. For people who say that this was a a victory, no matter how small, I would genu genuinely like to hear from you because I want to know why you think that based on this. These people made this decision on fear. They didn't make it on facts. And I would like to know what what made it into the trial. Like I haven't been able to see any of this stuff. So if you do know and you can point me to something, please do that. Mm, this is the perspective thing. Mm. The other thing about this, they're really focusing on the I can't breathe thing. Okay, look, I understand. If somebody's saying I can't breathe, and usually what you would do is get off of them, right? However, these are police officers, and this is a man who's been resisting them from the time that they got there, okay? He could be faking. You just don't know as a police officer. When this guy, when Chauvin was there looking at the video, from everybody's body cam that you can find this online. That's easy enough. So that's why I'm not really gonna link it because you can find it. The other other officers with him, with him weren't like, hey, get up, let's do something different. They were not worried about it. They didn't look concerned. Every single one of them just stood back like this was normal because they're trained to use this method. It's been used for years and years and years. This is the first guy who's ever been like, well, now it's your fault um, that he's dead because you used this thing for years. And as someone, you know, if you're looking at being a cop and then you're looking at this going, well, any training I receive could get me thrown in jail, you're not gonna become a cop. You're not gonna look at that and go, well, that's, a, that's something I can do. It already has dangers and now my training is a danger to me because if I do it exactly the way I was trained to do it, I'm going to jail. And that really makes me mad too, because what it does effectively is get rid of the police. If you can't defund them, then just make it so dangerous that people don't want to do it anymore. And then what we have is people like George Floyd and is people like other you know criminals who can run amok as much as they want because now you've made it so dangerous for people to come into the structured law enforcement that they're like nah it's not worth it i just wish people would think about that kind of stuff are we for cops or are we for people who are breaking the law you know, are we for being able to, you know, I'm not for cops murdering people or doing the wrong thing, but they didn't do the wrong thing. They did exactly what they were trained to do, what they've been trained to do for years. They were very submissive with him at the beginning. They did try to get him in the car. I mean, all, I mean, if you watch any of the video, you see that they were doing the right thing all the way up and somebody still died. If I'm on trial for that, I'm doing what I'm trained to do, I'm doing everything the right way, and I go to jail for murder, I'm gonna be pretty pissed off. It's gonna send a message to people, hey, don't be a cop, because they'll put you in jail for murder for doing, for using your training and everything that we are telling you is the right thing to do. For people who think this is something that is a good thing, please tell me what kind of training the cops should have. Because I know I remember when this first started, I was, I was, I was livid for a lot of reasons. One of them being that the church likes to also virtue signal. And that really makes me angry. You'll, you'll do this here where you're like, oh, this is great, but I won't see anything about child trafficking. I won't see anything about slavery. I won't see anything about anything else, but this 
because it's popular and because it's popping in the news right now, you'll talk about. And that really makes me mad because we should really be justice for everybody. So, I just, why is it that he's the one who got jail and was acute and was convicted of murder? I hope his appeal goes through, is all I can say. Um, nothing happened to them as far as I could find. These other officers who were with him. And there was like four other guys with him. Any one of them could have said anything and didn't. Why? Because they're training. They've done it probably a hundred times or so or more. I just... If you have a problem with being trained like that, then maybe that's a discussion we can have. But for me, when you come to me, or if I'm going to have a conversation about this, you better have answers. Not just it shouldn't be this way. I don't know what putting a knee on somebody's neck really does. I've never done it. I've never been, I've never put myself in the situation where some, for somebody to do it to me. Again, if I was in this situation with the cops and the cops have stopped me, it is, here is my, my papers, basically. You know, what can I, you know, what have I done? You know, all this, I'm sorry. He didn't say that. He's like, don't take me back to jail. He just didn't want to go to jail again. Then don't be doing stupid stuff. Like... And again, I'm not even saying he deserved to die. He didn't deserve to die. He deserved to be in jail. And that's really all I can go. I knew Chauvin was going to jail because of all the mobbing. This has happened before and it's probably going to happen again. And I think it's ridiculous. It's not justice. There is a certain, there is a certain line to personal responsibility. Okay. I am personally responsible for everything I do outside of my home, inside my home, etc. If someone reacts to that in a way that is weird or I'm like, well, hold on, that's not what I meant, then I should speak up and go, well, hold on, that's not what I meant, uh, you know, I'm sorry. If they continue to, to react like that, then I can get somebody else involved. Where is the personal responsibility for George Floyd? Why is it that I and anyone else out here would be responsible for what happened here as much as the other person would be? But when it comes to this, they're not. They're just like these angels that nothing, that they didn't do anything for. I just, I don't understand. I don't understand the other side of this. So that's why I'm saying if you are... If you are on the other side of this and you're watching it and you can explain it to me without rhetoric, you can just be like, well, actually this isn't how they're trained or actually he didn't do this right or in all of this kind of stuff, then we can talk about that. But otherwise, I don't think that this was a trial. I think this man was just offered up to the mob as well. Uh, and because the alternate jury literally said that that is one of the things that that is one of the larger issues that they were considering and that makes me mad because if we were just using facts and we were just watching the video and we weren't like oh well people might come to my house well you know the truth has a cost people might come to your house are you going to be on the side of truth or are you going to be on the side of well, fear. And this kind of stuff makes me angry because we, even from the Middle Ages, understood, or maybe beginning in the Middle Ages, understood that truth, justice, you know, chivalry as it existed back then. I'm not going to say how it exists now, but all of these things have a cost, but that cost is worth it. And now we're like, well, my house could burn down or somebody could come to my house and egg it or something. It would be uncomfortable. It might even be dangerous. Sorry. So now I'm not going to do, I forget truth, forget real justice, forget any of that. This is not going forward as a society. This is going backwards. This is going back to Attila the Hun. This is going back to mob rule. This is going back to strength of the, you know, whoever is the strongest wins, whether they're actually right or not. This is what is going back 
too. I'll burn your house down or I'll come to your house or I'll do this if you don't do what I say. That's the strong, that's the strong arm position. And my answer to that, and it has always been my answer to that is, okay, you come on over to my house, you come on over and you try and burn my house down. I'm going to put you in jail anyway, and I'm going to do what's right, regardless of the price. We really need to get back to that. And I'm sorry, now I'm ranting. <laughs> I'm going to provide you with the links, guys, and I'm going to end here. Um, this is just where I'm at with this. Like I said, if you're on the other side and you can provide me some facts and you can provide me some things where you're, you're like, well, this is why I think this way, then let's have that conversation and let me... You can present it to me and I'm going to think about it for a little while. Because to me, you could maybe do manslaughter with this. Maybe. Because to me, there's absolutely no reason to say he murdered anybody. Uh, manslaughter is a stretch, but I can see it. Because once again, he's doing what he's trained to do. And I do not want to send the message to officers that... If we train you, we tell you this is what's the right thing to do, this is how you handle this situation, and then we put them in jail for doing it, they're going to do whatever they think they need to do while they're out there. And that could mean death again. Okay, so, you know, how would you train the cops? What would you want the cops to do differently here? Etc. So, I'll see you guys in the next one, guys. I'm sorry I got a little... I got a little emotional. It's going to be all right. I just, it is worth it to pay the price to do the right thing. It always is. It always will be. I say that as a Christian because I know that as I do the right thing, God is behind me. He'll either rescue me or I'll be with him and both are good. <laughs> so I can see kind of your hesitancy if you don't have Christ, but for me as someone as who's a Christian, doing the right thing, doing what you're supposed to do is worth it and I do I have God behind me protecting me or waiting for me if I die so anyways like I said I'm gonna end it here thanks a lot for joining me and I'll see you in the next one bye